Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week, by popular demand, we are creating Gaster Blasters. This week, we're going to focus on spawning the actual Gaster Blasters themselves. And next week, we're going to focus on creating the beams. Now, first thing that we're going to need is our graphic for our sprite. I'm just going to download one from the internet. I just did a search for Gaster Blaster GIF and this is the one that I quite like. But if you can't find one that you like, then feel free just to download this sprite from my Scratch project. The link is in the description as always. So if you haven't downloaded a GIF before, this is how you do it. Right click, save image as, and then give it a name. We're gonna call this Gaster Blaster, and then press save. Now we're saving this into our downloads folder. Then in your Scratch project, you go to the bottom right corner here and move up until you get to the Upload Sprite option. Click on that and you should be able to go to your Downloads folder and get your Gaster Blaster and then press Open. Now if you do this with a JPEG or a single image, you'll get a sprite with one costume. But if you do this with an animated GIF, all of the frames of the animation will become costumes in your sprite. Now there's a few things we need to do here. First of all, we need to make sure that this is pointing the correct direction. So we're going to use the select tool. We're going to select this entire thing. And if you hold shift on your keyboard and then press this rotate here, you'll be able to rotate it around in 45 degree chunks, which will make it nice and straight. So we're going to point it to the right now the next thing that we need to do is select the fill tool, make sure that our fill is selected as nothing, and then fill in these large black spaces in our costume. Now there are still some black outlines that are left behind, but I quite like that effect. Now we need to do the same for all of these other costumes. So now it's time to code our Gaster Blasters. And the first place we're going to go is actually our projectile sprite. Now, this might be surprising, but if you think about it, it makes sense. All of our other attacks are in here. So if we want our Gaster Blasters to be triggered from anywhere, it should be from the projectile sprite in between other attacks. So we're going to create a function to control a basic Gaster Blaster spawn. We're going to go to My Blocks. We're going to click on Make a Block. Now I'm going to call this Gaster, all in capitals. And then I'm going to put a space and an X. Then I'm going to click on Add an Input, and I'm going to call this input X. So this X here is just a description for what this input is. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to click on Text, Add a Label. I'm going to call this Y. And that is a description for this input that we're about to add now that we are also calling Y. Then we're going to click on text, add a label again. And this is going to be D. This is going to be D for direction. And we're going to click on add an input and call this D. Now we're going to press OK. And you should have your Gaster X, then an X, at Y, Y, D, D. Now this might seem a bit confusing, but if you pull out one of these Gaster blocks here, you've now got this very handy Gaster X, and then you put the X coordinate of where you want your Gaster to spawn, and then the Y, that's where the Y coordinate of your Gaster will spawn, and then the D will be the direction that the Gaster Blaster will face. So this makes it a lot easier for future you when you're trying to figure out where you want your Gaster Blasters to be. So. Let's get rid of this for now and put some code underneath define Gaster. So we're going to use a variable. We're going to in fact use three variables. Click on variables, click on make a variable, and we're going to call this first variable Gaster spawn x. Press OK. Then we're going to click on make a variable and call this Gaster spawn y, press OK. Click on make a variable again, call this one Gaster spawn d, and this d is for the direction. Press OK. 
then pull out set gaster spawn x and then drag this x over here and we're going to duplicate this but we're going to make this gaster spawn y and gaster spawn d then go to control and get out create clone of gaster blaster and wait zero seconds now waiting for zero seconds might seem very strange but this will ensure that if you're creating lots of gaster blaster clones all at once that they are getting the spawn x y and d variables in the correct order and they're not getting confused now we're going to look around for when green flag clicked and look down and you should have your main gameplay loop underneath if mode equals evade. Just take this out for now and put it somewhere by itself. We're going to put inside if mode evade. We're going to go to my blocks and get out gaster x, y, d. And we need to put something in the inputs here. So to start off with, I'm just going to say minus 170 for the x, 0 for the y, and 90 for the direction. We're going to come back later and change these numbers to see what sort of interesting results we can get, but for now we need to go to the Gaster Blaster code. First things first, let's shrink this down a little bit. Just select the size here. I'm going to try 20. Then go to events, get out when green flag clicked, go to looks, get out hide, then go to control, get out when I start as clone, go to motion, get out go to x and y, and point in direction, go to variables, Get out gaster spawn x and put it over the go to x. Gaster spawn y and put it over the y. Gaster spawn d and put it in the pointing direction. So you can see how we're going to use these three variables to control where our gaster blasters are going to spawn. And we're going to be able to do that from code that's in the projectile sprite. So now that we're creating our gaster blasters, how do we want them to appear? They could just fade in like a lot of our projectiles do, but in the Undertale game, they normally move from off screen onto screen. Now there's a few different ways we could do that, but here's a nice easy way. Let's go to my blocks and click on make a block. We'll call this block move backwards. And we're going to click on run without screen refresh. Press OK, move this off to the side and grab move backwards from here and put it right here. Let's put some code underneath define move backwards. Let's go to variables and click on make a variable. We're going to call this move distance and we're going to select for this sprite only and press OK. So we're going to move our Gaster Blasters backwards before they can enter the screen. And we're going to keep track of how far they've moved. So we're going to get out set move distance to zero, then go to control, get out repeat until, go to sensing, get out touching edge, Go to motion, get out, move, negative one steps. Go to variables and get out, change, move distance by one. So this code is going to move the Gaster Blasters backwards until they hit the edge of the screen and keep track of how many steps they've moved using this variable. Now, once it's hit the edge of the screen, 
we should move the Gaster Blasters so that they're entirely off the screen. So let's go to Control and get out a Repeat 10 and then just right click on where you've got Move, Duplicate and put that into your Repeat. Now I think Repeat 45 should work for about the size of my Gaster Blasters but have a bit of an experiment if you think your Gaster Blasters are larger or smaller than about 45 pixels. Okay, so let's go back to our When I Start As Clone code. So now what we need to do is go to Looks, get out, go to Front Layer and just put it here, then get out Switch Costume to Gaster Blaster, the first costume, make sure it's that first costume, costume number one. Then we need to get out show. Now at this point, remember our Gaster Blaster is still off the screen. It's time to move it back on and we're going to use our move distance to figure out how far it needs to move. So go to control, get out repeat 10, put it right here and then go to motion get out move 10 steps, go to operators, get out a divide by operator, the one with the slash, put it inside our move, go to variables, get out move distance, put it in the first socket of our divide by, and the second socket, put in 10. So what this is going to do is it's going to take our move distance and divide it into 10 and then it's going to move that 10 times. So this is how fast it's going to take your Gaster Blaster to get into its position. It's spawn X, Y. So you, if you want it to be faster, you can change this to 5 and that to 5 as well. Just keep this number and that number the same. And if you want it to be slower, you just make it a large number, maybe 20 here and 20 there. Have a bit of an experiment, see what it's like. Go to your projectile sprite, look for when green flag clicked, look down until you find if mode equals evade, and underneath your gaster, put a wait three seconds. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks very good. Okay, well let's head back to the Gaster Blaster code and then just scroll down. We want to put some stuff underneath our repeat 10. I think first thing I want to do is put in a wait 0.05 seconds. And then I want to animate through all the different costumes. So let's go to control, get out repeat five, Go to looks, get out next costume. After our Gaster Blaster opens its mouth, we need to fire the beam. So let's go to my blocks, click on make a block and call this spawn beam. Now make sure you click on run without screen refresh and press OK. Just move that off to the side for now. We're gonna do that next week, but for now we're going to put our spawn beam right underneath our repeat five. And after we fired the beam, we need the Gaster Blaster to fade away. Go to control, get out wait 0.5 seconds. Let's switch it back to its first costume as it fades away. Go to looks, switch costume, to Gaster Blaster 1. This is optional, you can decide which costume it has when it fades away. Go to Control, get out Repeat 10, and underneath that, delete this clone. And inside our repeat, we're going to go to Looks, get out Change Ghost Effect by 10. Okay, let's see what it looks like now. That looks great. Awesome. I'm really happy with the way that looks. Okay, let's head back to the projectile code. 
Now, you could have a separate line for every Gaster Blaster you wanted to make, but that could make your attack patterns really long. So what I recommend is you actually create some more my blocks for particular attack patterns you want to repeat. Now I'm going to show you more of these next lesson, but for now I'm just going to show you how to make a sort of box attack using Gaster Blasters. So go to make a block and call this Gaster Box and press OK. Now just make a bit of space underneath Gaster Box. What we're actually going to do is get our Gaster XYD and put a bunch of them inside our Gaster Box. You can put functions inside more functions. Now these first two Gasters are going to be on the left side, about here and here, and they're going to be facing right. So for the X, I think minus 170 should be pretty good for both of them. For the Y, let's say the first one is zero, and the second one is minus 85. And then for the direction, because we want them to face right, we'll need to put in 90. Go to control, get out, wait, 0 0.1 seconds. And let's duplicate these three here. These two are going to appear above facing down. So X minus 70 for this one and the Y as 75 and direction as 180. And for this one, we'll say 70, 75, 180. Now duplicate all of these, put them here, make sure you've got enough space. For these two, let's make these both 170. We can leave, this is zero, this is minus 85 and change the direction to minus 90. And for these two, we can leave the X as it is, but change the Y to minus 150, this Y to minus 150, and let's set the direction as up, so zero and zero. Now look for your gameplay loop underneath if mode equals evade, where you had your Gaster XYD and replace it with a Gaster box and see what that looks like. Oh, that looks great, excellent. So at this point, you can get really creative and develop your own Gaster patterns, just like this one that we did just now. Try experimenting with different X and Y coordinates and directions. If you have trouble figuring out uh, what the numbers should be for the X and Y coordinates, as we've done before, just get a sprite, drag it to where you want it to be, and take a note of what the X coordinate is right here, and the Y coordinate is right here. If you struggle to remember the numbers for the directions, then just go to motion, find point in direction 90, click on the 90, and just drag it around and take note of the number. And then that will give you the direction that you're looking for. As always, subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see the next episode on making Gaster Beams to go along with our Gaster Blasters. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.